Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the CAS360 webinar series. My name is Warren Rendon, and I will be taking you through the session today. I'm the head of CAS360 at BGL. Now, thank you all for coming along to our second webinar. So today is, a, is our second in our four webinar series. Um, now, we did record last week, and that session is available on the CAS360 community. So if you wanted, if you did miss last week's session, if you wanted to uh, watch it, uh, if you wanted to relive the magic, um, you can watch it on the CAS360 community. Another place, though, that you can go to to view a whole heap of BGL resources is BGL's YouTube channel. Um, we have a whole heap there, all of our webinars across all of our products are available on our YouTube channel, so you can go along there. Now, today's webinar is all about handy tips and some little tips inside CAS360 to really help you get the most out of CAS360. So today I'm not focusing on preparing an annual review or a 484. I'm focusing on a couple of the smaller features in CAS360 to really help you get more out of CAS360. I have mentioned that it is a four part series. Uh, we do have a session next Wednesday on trust management and the Wednesday after the 27th on CAS360 integration. So I hope you can join uh, me for them. Now, as, a, as standard with all of our webinars, we do have obviously a set program that we will go through. We do encourage you to ask questions and we have Andy and Jeremy from the CAS360 team answering questions. So if you do have any questions throughout the session, please type them into the Q&A uh, and we will answer your question. But not only that, we will also post the answers to all of the questions on the CAS360 community uh, in the next couple of days once we post the video up. So we will have all of those answers available to you. But with, uh, without further ado, I will start. So today's session is all about CAS360 handy tips. Now, where I'm going to start here is all about communication. Now, for those of you that joined last week's webinar, I spoke a bit about the philosophy when we built CAS360. And I spoke about how when we built CAS360, we focused on being able to prepare your ASIC forms and complete your annual reviews. And we wanted to be able to do that as the absolute core but what we also wanted to do was really to look at the ways that you were completing the work that was done outside of CAS Desktop and how we could build that into CAS 360. And what I'm talking about here is how we can automate things that you are using spreadsheets for and using calendars so that how we could do that. And that's what we covered in last week's session. And this week, we're going to focus on communicating with your clients, but using CAS 360 to do that. Um, so instead of going to your phone and calling a client or going to your Gmail or your Microsoft Outlook and emailing a client, I'm going to show you how you can do all of that inside CAS360. So what we've got here is a slide about the key to communicating in CAS360 and what it's all designed to do is to help your clients. And what we want to do here is help you. And I've got some simple questions here and some simple examples here. But how can you speed up the process of getting signed documents back? A lot of the time, it's not you that's the, the problem. It's the client getting the document signed and delivered back to you. But how can you use a tool such as CAS360 to speed that process up? And how can you make sure your clients don't get late fees? Again, I spoke about in last week's webinar how late fees are really, you know, firm by firm have got a different policy. And sometimes firms don't look at late fees at all for clients. And CAS360 really flipped the script with that because it gives you so much information about late fees. So what I'm going to show you today is some things that you can do to help make sure your clients don't get late fees. And that means you don't have any arguments about late fees and who's responsible and who has to pay for them. Okay, and down the bottom I've got here, do you think your clients would be happy to get an SMS the day before ASIC find them? SMSs can sometimes be a little bit topical in the industry. I've certainly been out to practices who think it's not right for an accounting firm to send an SMS to the client. Um, I, my doctor sends me an SMS the day before an appointment. Uh, if it's all right for doctors to do it, I'm pretty sure it'd be okay for an accountant, but certainly it's up to the firm. So what do you need to do to be able to unlock that? What do you need to do to be able to make 
all of that happen inside CAS 360 rather than going to other applications? Well, it's pretty simple. You need to add the client's email addresses and mobile phone numbers into CAS 360. This is the stumbling block. And if you are, if you are sending emails to clients via Outlook today, the reason you're probably doing that is because of this, is because you don't have the email addresses for your clients in CAS 360. So how do we get that? How do we solve this fundamental problem that's stopping us from using CAS 360 to its fullest? There are a number of ways. First of all, is through our practice management integrations. So if you have Zero Practice Manager, um, you can integrate Zero Practice Manager with CAS 360. And what that will actually do is bring across all of your uh, client email address and phone number information and bring it into CAS 360. Okay, so there's around 400 practices that have CAS 360 and Zero Practice Manager integrated. Um, and that is a great way of getting all of that information into the system. We also coming soon will support GreatSoft, uh, which is another practice management product. And again, we'll have a client list integration. We also have that same integration with SimpleFund 360. So again, if you've got the email or phone number in SimpleFund 360, you can integrate it with CAS 360 and it might eliminate a little bit of the data entry. The next one, because I know that majority of the firms, we still have around 800 firms using CAS 360, only about 400 with XPM connected. The majority of you will need an import, a way to get that information in, in bulk. So what we can do for you is we can give you an export of your contacts list, get you to put the email address and phone numbers into that contact spreadsheet and send it back to us. And we can import it. It takes a few seconds and we'll import all of that contact information. It's a one-time pr project that will unlock future value going forward. Now I have put my email address down the bottom. It's always dangerous and risky to do this, but if you would like the import file, if you would like, if you don't have many email addresses or mobile phone numbers in your current CAS 360, send me an email. I can send you all of your contact list and get you to start putting in the email address and mobile phone numbers for your clients. The third option, this one's not all that revolutionary, but you've always got a keyboard and mouse and you can always enter in the uh, email address and phone numbers. And if you've got a small client base, maybe that's the best way to go about it. But I do encourage you to contact me if you do have any, uh, any desire to get that spreadsheet out to you so you can start putting in your details. And what we want here is we want CAS 360 to become your communication hub. CAS 360 can be the hub for all of the communication around your asset corporate compliance and your trust compliance as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you an example of how having the email addresses uh, and the mobile phone numbers will save you a huge amount of time. So if I go to the CAS 360, here I have my company screen, right? So up here I have on my list of my companies. Now, if you want more information on the alerts, I did cover this in detail in the last webinar, so I'm not gonna cover that today. But what I am going to show you is the fact that I've got a client here that's got a lodgement due today. Okay, so as I showed last week, we prepared the form in CAS 360. CAS 360 works out when the lodgement's due, and I can see that this client has a lodgement due today. What this means is, if this lodgement's not done today, the, and the client lodges a document, they're going to get a fine. Okay, so there's going to be a fine. So here we are in the situation where we can save our client. We can protect our client from ASIC fines and ASIC penalties. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's a 484 or an annual review, the deadlines happen and we've got the ability through CAS 360 to avoid a fine for the client, which I think is fantastic customer service. So I can click here on send reminder. Now up comes my reminder screen. Now this all looks pretty straightforward because I've got my details entered in. So for this particular contact, I've got the email address and I've got the mobile phone number. So I can send them an email, I can send them an SMS, I can toggle on the document so I can send that. Okay, but what if I don't have that information? So what I'm going to do here is select to send this reminder to another person, okay? And what I'm going to do here is select my test contact. Now, unfortunately for Mr. Contact <laughs> and for me, I'm trying to send him a reminder, but I don't have 
the email address or the mobile phone number to be able to send a reminder to this person. Now, obviously, if we go down the spreadsheet approach or the zero practice manager approach, we're going to be able to get that information in through another way. But what you are always able to do in CAS 360 is at the time of sending the reminder or at the time of sending the document, you are able to enter in the email or the mobile phone number. So if this information is currently stored in your CRM, your practice management system, whatever system you're using, maybe even your Outlook, what you're able to do is go and click on the missing information here. And I can enter in the mobile phone number or the email address of this particular person. So I'll just put this in. I can hit save. And what this is going to allow me to do is to now send that email that email reminder to this particular client the day before a penalty is kicked in. Okay, so we're able to get this information out to the client. What CAS 360 has been designed to do is to remove any extra work that is required. Once you have the information, the email addresses for the directors, you don't need to do any more typing. So if today to send a reminder, you're using your Outlook and you're going into your Outlook and you're typing out a little email or you're even using a templated email in Outlook, it's still taking you more time than what it would take inside CAS 360. So if I click on send, I've got my email template and it's brought in all of the information for the company. And I can customize this and it's a one-off customization. You set it up once and away you go. And then I can hit send. And that has now reminded my client that they have a document deadline due tomorrow and I've attached the document. I've done that by email and I didn't need to type an email. I just click send and it sends that email off to the client. The other feature that's unlocked here though is the SMS reminder. Again, SMS reminders are really powerful because they get a great response, okay? Now, this situation, Lodgement is due tomorrow. I can hit send reminder. I can tick SMS. And what I'm going to do is send an SMS to the client telling them that this form 484 needs to be lodged tomorrow. So I click on send. Now, if I had DocuSign enabled, the client can actually digitally sign the document from the SMS. So what I can do here is I can hit send on the SMS. Okay. And that will send that, that particular message off to the client. Okay, so you're able to send that off to the client and the best thing, your client can respond. So the client gets their SMS, they can view the document on the SMS. As I said, if they want to digitally sign it, they can digitally sign it on the SMS. Your client can reply and like magic, you receive a response saying, thank you, please lodge this today. I click on view and I can actually view the discussion that I've had with that particular client and I can reply. So I can send an SMS back to the client and telling them that, that you will lodge it. Some couple of things here, because you've got that SMS and that writing where you've got approval from the client to sign the document or to lodge the document, sorry, that's all you need. ASIC's website states that as a registered agent with a Form 362 signed, you need approval to lodge a document. You don't need it signed. It needs to be approved. So an SMS, which is tracked and stored in CAS 360 and not deleted, is sufficient approval. So is an email response saying you can lodge this, by the way. So hopefully that shows you the power and the features that we're able to unlock when we have the email addresses and the mobile phone numbers in CAS 360. If you don't have that information in there, please find one of the three ways to get that information in because it unlocks so many features. Okay, I've just got some questions here. Uh, can I preview the reminder email uh, prior to clicking send? Absolutely, uh, Catherine. So if you click on send reminder and hit send, here is the email template. And you can, at this point, make a one-off correction as well. So you've got a system template that's in email templates. Um, two weeks ago, we did a webinar on, e on editing templates and I can send that through. Um, it is on the community. So you can edit all of the templates, but what you can also do is you can also make one-off changes to the email template where you can type something in, 
and then send that off. And that will be a, a one-off change essentially to the email. Okay, so you can do that as well. A um, couple of questions here. Auto, auto creation of the registered office fee is one thing that is not automatic. Uh, coming soon, Scott. Uh, what, uh, who does the SMS say it's from? It's a really good question there, Lauren. With the SMS, when I show you the SMS, what we have done is we actually put the firm name. Now, my firm name is called Warren Test because it's Warren's Test account. But we actually put the firm name uh, inside the SMS. But just like the email, you actually get a preview of the SMS before it is sent to the client. So you can customize this completely. Okay. And you can say that it's from whoever you want it to say. When it comes to who, what comes up on your client's phone, it does come up as a phone number. Okay. The reason it has to come up as a phone number is because that's how we receive the response. So if we just sent it from, you know, ABC accounting, the client can't respond to that. It's just the way the SMS protocols work, but certainly you're able to, um, uh, to, to specify in the body of the text, who the email, who the text is from. Certainly when you're sending document reminders to a client, it's a bit different to sending a, a, an invoice, an SMS saying you owe this amount of money. A document reminder obviously isn't asking for any money. So it's, it's certainly a, a safe way because the client on the other end isn't giving up, isn't paying any bill or paying any money. So it's not as if they're going to be or think it's spam. Hopefully that answers that question. Um, a couple of the other questions have been uh, answered by Jeremy and Andy, uh, and we will uh, put that up. One question question was there is that there is a question in regards to getting documents signed electronically and, and through suite files and things like that. Certainly I mentioned in last week's webinar that we've got an Adobe sign integration which is coming out soon uh, and suite files we're working with them as well. What I will do though is I'll move on to the next uh, to the next feature I'm going to touch on. Uh, if there are any questions about the reminders please put them in the chat. Uh, hopefully I can uh, hopefully I've answered those ones. I think I answered the ones that are listed there. Um, will Ag is seeing SMS system integrate with BGL? Uh, Gloria, I don't think so. Um, I think uh, BGL's SMS system is uh, unique to BGL. I mean, it's integrated into the product. So we don't have any API integration there. Uh, I see your comments, Scott. I'll, uh, I'll get back to them. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to move on now to the CAS360 company contacts. And what I'm going to talk about here is how these contacts work. So I'm going to focus on two types of contacts. Okay. And this is the signing contact and the billing contact. Okay. Um, so a signing contact and a billing contact. Now, if I go back to CAS 360 and I go into one of my companies, what I'm going to be able to do is show you this information. So if I go to my Daniel's BGL RegTech company, I see here, I've got a company contact section. And in here, I have different people. Now, what these company contacts are really for is to add additional people to the company record that may or may not be directors that you need to send that correspondence to. So by default, CAS360 always sends the company information to the company directors, okay? Um, that's generally how a company will work, especially in a mum and dad company and things like that. But we understand that uh, companies are different and there's different people that will look after the responsibilities for different companies. Sometimes you might have a, a PA or a bookkeeper or someone like that that is involved in the process where you're not really sending the information directly to the directors, you're sending them to a third party or an intermediary that then passes them on to the directors. This is what the contacts are set up for. They're really designed so that you can do this and you can do this really easily. So in this particular situation, I've got uh, the signing contact as myself and I've got two billing contacts. Okay, I've got Adriana and Adele. So what I'm able to do is actually have this information sent differently to different people. So if I had a document that needed to be signed for this particular company, it would go to Warren. If I had a bill or an invoice, it would go to Adriana and Adele. The best way to show you this is through the alerts. So if I go to Daniel's BGL RegTech company and I go to my uh, debt reminder and I click on send reminder, CAS360 automatically brings in the billing, the billing contacts because these are the contacts that we've set up to be responsible for the billing. 
and for any of the ASIC bills. Okay, so what we're able to do is specify exactly who we want the bills to go to in advance. And then every time a bill comes in for that particular company, you're able to, to send those bills to the right people. Okay, so in this case, it's an invoice. It doesn't need to go to the signing contact. If, if the, in the situation, uh, Adele or, and Adriana are responsible for paying the bills, may, they might not be company directors, but we've set CAS 360 up so that they get the bills. Okay, not the directors. If I go now to process an annual review for that company. Now an annual review is a special case. If I click on prepare documents, and I've got to turn a digital signing off here, but if I go into uh, documents, CAS 360 has identified for the annual review that you need to send it to the signing contact because documents need to be signed, but you also need to send it to the billing contact because bills need to be paid, the invoice needs to be paid. So CAS 360 has automatically added in both the signing and the billing contacts so that you can deliver this to the right people. And so that the billing can be taken care of by uh, Adele and Adriana and the signing can be taken care of by Warren. Now, if I go, I've got a question here about how to add the billing contact, I will go and show you that. But this is really how these contacts work. You can set up different types of contacts for different things. Obviously there's partner contact as well, which has its own features, but the the signing contact and the billing contact are really important when you're communicating with your client because you're able to say all bills go to this person, all documents for signing go for this person, and it will essentially ignore who the company directors are because this will overwrite it. Okay. Now I'll go back and show you how to add a billing contact. So just go into the company. Okay. You've got your company contacts here. Click on add. Okay, and you get a list of all the contact types. So you can add in an email, a contact number, partner, manager, billing contact. So I add a billing contact in, and then you just get your contact list. Okay, so uh, you can quick add here, but I'll add Jess as the contact. There's only one more thing you need to do. You need to click save. Click save. And that will save the billing contact. And now when I go to send my invoice for this particular company, hit send and it will automatically add Jess to that billing contact. A couple of questions here. When processing an annual review, will it automatically send the solvency resolution to the director and the bill to the billing contact or does it send the whole package to both? Ricardo, right now today, it sends the whole package to all. Uh, we do have plans to split them. Okay, so wait for that future, that feature coming soon. But uh, right now today, it will send the whole package to all of them. Uh, another question here, annual reviews, can they be set up so only one director has to sign? Uh, I answer that question in about five or six minutes. So that is how our company contacts are set up. So hopefully you can use those contacts, especially when you are having situations where you uh, do have someone that acts as an intermediary for those companies. I said five or six minutes, but it's actually up to it right now. So what I'm going to go through now is some of the options that are in doc production. Okay, some of the features that you may not have seen that have been there for a while, but really allow you to customize and nearly create the documents that you want to create and maybe hide some information that you don't want. Okay, but include things in document packs. So we've got changes to cover letter. I touched on the annual review cover letter last week. We've got document options, document uh, review, and also the ability to upload, okay? So I'll show you how this all works. So if I go to my annual review screen and I click on prepare documents, this screen will all be very familiar to you, I hope. <laughs> it is your annual review document production screen. Now, what, I'm got, what I've got the ability to do here is obviously click on these options buttons. And this is where you can change the way the documents are, appear and are prepared and importantly, who is signing and how many people need to sign. Okay, so some really powerful features here. The cover letter is pretty simple. You select your template. Okay, so uh, if you're not using an annual review cover letter from the system, if you've got that toggled off and you're going to Microsoft Word and producing your own cover letter, you are wasting time. <laughs> Go watch last week's webinar because I show you exactly how to put in your annual review cover letter and how much time it can save you. So certainly go and check that. 
what you can do in this screen is you can select who the cover letter is addressed to. So all of the directors will appear here, okay? And you can uh, type in who you want to appear in that cover letter, okay? So I can spe specify it to go to Daniel and then the letter will be addressed to Daniel. What I can also do here is I can export the document to Word. If I wanted to make a one-off change, and this applies to every document in CAS 360, if I wanted to make a one-off change, export it to Word, make the change, and I can re-upload it. The next feature I'm going to show you is the options for the annual company statement. So I can click on options here. One of the key features we actually have here is the ability to show or hide the corporate key. Okay, some firms don't want to send the corporate key. Some firms do want to send the corporate key. Luckily, CAS 360 has both covered and you can choose to send it or not. If you're finding that you've got a particular client that likes to go onto the ASIC website and make his own changes or their own changes, maybe don't send them the corporate key. You can also specify here who is the form signatory on the, ASIC, on the CAS 360 version of the annual review. Again, you've got your templates, you can customize the annual review uh, document. You can customize it through Microsoft Word. It's really powerful. You can specify which template you want to use. And also you can export the document to Word. Okay, and now I'll show you the solvency resolution. So before I talk about here, before I go through all the features here, I'll talk about resolutions versus minutes. There is a huge discussion uh, on the community about resolutions versus minutes and certainly firms have their own uh, reasons and, 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 and views on what it should be. CAS 360 allows you to do either, okay? And every time there's a resolution, unless the Corporations Act absolutely specifies it, we give you the ability to make it a resolution or a minute. So to do this, what you can do is you can change resolution to a minute. Some of you might be asking, what's the difference? Generally, the difference is who signs. So a resolution is generally signed by all of the company directors. So the question I had earlier was, how do we get the uh, solvency to only be signed by one person? The answer is change it to a minute because a minute is only signed by the chairperson, okay? So the resolution is signed by all the directors. The minute is signed by the chairperson. Okay, so if I only want this signed by one person, I can click on minute and all of my options change. If I want this to be a minute going forward always, okay, if I always want it to be a minute, click on the star. And that has now saved it as default. Every time I prepare an annual review, it's going to set it to a minute and it's only going to be signed by the chairperson. Which chairperson will CAS 360 specifies because you can do that in the officer screen, but you can also select the chairperson from the drop down list. Okay, so you can specify. You can also specify the meeting address. Okay, again, this will come from either the business address or the meeting address if it's provided in the company, but you can customize that meeting address as well. You can also change the date. Okay, so you can change the date and you can use a different solvency resolution template. You might have different partners or different managers that like different templates for solvency or for their cover letter. CAS 360 supports unlimited variations of the templates. And from here, I can click save. And now I'm going to prepare a minute, not a resolution. Okay, so hopefully that answers those questions. Okay, I have a few questions here. Okay. Da, uh, do you have to have sign in contact and billing contact entered in the company detail screen? Uh, Janice, absolutely not. Um, what will happen though, is if you don't, we will specify the company directors receive those documents. Now, in many cases, that's actually right. Okay. But um, you don't have to have a sign in contact or a billing contact. Um, it just might be helpful. So hopefully that answers that question. For the solvency resolution, if there are two directors and one is marked as non-attendee, the resolution when prepared says a sole director is signing. Is there a way to fix this? Uh, Chantal will get in touch because yes, there should be. Okay, the last feature I'm going to touch on for, oh, sorry, I've got two more features for the document production. Next one is review. Now, so many of you require review of the documents that you send out of CAS 360 by a partner or a manager. Okay, in CAS 360, we have built a process for this. 
If you need your documents to be reviewed, you can use the review feature. Toggle this on, and then here up comes a list of all the CAS 360 users. Now, if your partner or manager isn't a CAS 360 user, add them, okay? Add them as a user. And then what you're able to do is you're able to send the documents to them. So I can send one to Andy. And you're able to send the documents to Andy for review. Andy gets an email, he can review them, he can approve or reject the documents, okay? And then they can be sent off to the client. If today you are exporting these documents to PDF, writing an email to your partner or manager, then waiting for them to review and come back, honestly, it's just wasting time. Utilize the, the tool inside CAS 360 because it's streamlined. You don't have to go and write all those emails. All the emails are written. You just need to put in who the reviewer is. The final feature I'm going to show you in this screen is all about uploading additional documents. So sometimes we get asked a lot of questions around, especially the annual review, around the accounting firm's invoice. So we're sending out an annual review pack, but it's only got the ASIC invoice. How does the accounting firm get paid? If you send your annual reviews with your accounting firm invoice, all you need to do is click on upload here and you can upload your document, okay? You can upload your invoice. You can upload any document you want here, whether it's a contract, an agreement, any document. We don't have limitations here. So you can update, the, you can upload the document here and then you can send it as part of the document pack. Maybe you've got a company structure diagram you want to send out. Maybe you've got a company report you want to send out. Maybe it's a completely different tax document. Any document can be uploaded and attached to any document pack. I know I'm talking about the annual review here, but this, all of these features are available every time you prepare a document and send it to the client, not just in the annual review screen. So hopefully that covers a fair bit of uh, those questions. It's good to see Andy and Jeremy have been pretty busy in the Q&A, okay? Uh, just a couple of questions here. Instead of reminding a client one day before, can we remind them two days before? Uh, uh, Teresa, you can remind them uh, uh, up to 14 days before. To be honest, you can set up automated reminders and remind them the day after you've prepared it. Uh, I did cover a fair bit of this in last week's webinar, so check that out on the community. But yeah, I mean, the example I showed you, I, I deliberately set it up to be today to sort of show you that extreme example, but you absolutely can send uh, the reminders uh, whenever you need and you can uh, preset them to be automated. Uh, when using DocuSign, do you need to include, do you need to include a date function in the resolution and the minutes? The answer is no. Uh, the date information is provided by CAS360, not by DocuSign. Okay, hopefully that answers that question. Uh, do you have a storage limit for each company? We do have some companies that have records dated back to 1950. Anita, that's why you're using CAS 360 because we don't have a storage uh, limit and we don't, and we actually store all of your company historical data. So you can have shareholders from 1950 and you can type in 1975 as the company report date and you'll get the company report or the share register as it was on that date. It's a fantastic feature. Uh, is there a way to add DocuSign fields to manual documents you add to the email? No, there is not, Scott. Uh, and how do we know once the partner manager has reviewed the documents, do we get a notification saying it has been rejected or approved? Catherine, that is exactly right. You get a notification saying accepted or rejected. Uh, also, the information is stored in the document history tab. Hopefully that answers all of those questions. All right, moving on. The next feature I'm going to touch on is dividends. CAS 360 is your share register. It is the register of shares for all of your companies. When a dividend is paid, it is paid based on the share register. So what we've got in CAS 360 is some really powerful features that allow you to prepare dividend statements really easy. Now, dividends can be a bit interesting per firm. Sometimes it's the domain of the CorpSec person. Sometimes it's the domain of the accountant. What I'm here to show you is CAS 360 can prepare your dividend document pack for you, regardless of whose responsibility it is. And because CAS 360 has unlimited users, you don't need to worry about who's responsible, okay? You can allocate that particular access to potentially the accountant. We've designed it specifically for this because we've created a user role in CAS 360 called accountant. And the only thing that the accountant can do is prepare 
uh, company dividends and trust distributions. They can't actually make any changes to company data. Um, we've tried to protect you as much as we could there. So I'm going to show you how this works. So if I go into my company and I go to my BGL Corporate Solutions company, and I go to my shareholders tab, I can see here, I've got a company here with uh, quite a complex share structure. Um, we've got a number of different share classes, four in fact, and we've got a whole heap of shareholders, okay? So this information here, I can see I've got all this data here. You know, if I had this in a spreadsheet and I was preparing dividend statements in Microsoft Word, uh, this wouldn't be a lot of fun. It'd actually take a fair bit of time, probably an hour or two hours to go through and reconcile everything and, and, and create all of the uh, dividend statements and things like that in Microsoft Word. CAS360 is there to save you a huge amount of time with this. So if I go to my dividends, okay, so CAS360 does dividends, it's just in the shareholder screen and click on add dividend. Up comes my add new dividend. The first thing we wanna do here is set the date, okay? Because the date is so important because you need to own shares at the dividend date to get the dividend. CAS360 already has all of your shareholder information. So you don't need to go through and reconcile who held the shares on what date because CAS360 will do it for you. So I'm gonna go and put in the dividend date here. I'm going to select 30th of June. You can do this pretty easily through the date picker. Go to June 30 and we're done. So now I've got my date set as 30 June. What I'm going to do is here is, is to toggle this option on here. Now th what this will do is this will prepare all the documents on the 30th of June as well. So all the documents will be dated the 30th of June. Okay, make that very clear. All the, If I toggle that on, all the documents will be dated on the dividend date. If I toggle it off, all the documents will be dated today's date, which is the, the standard in CAS 360. So just to cl clarify that feature. In this case, I'm gonna toggle it on. And then I'm going to click and select my share type. So which share class is receiving dividends? And in some cases, they may all receive the same dividend or they may receive different dividends based on their share class. So CAS360 does give you the ability to uh, at least have that functionality. If you click on ordinary shares, CAS360 will tell me on that date, I have 3,302 shares. I'm going to select here a dividend per share. Let's make it quite a good dividend, maybe $250 per share. I can put in the franked amount here. Now we do get you to put in a dollar amount for the franking and then the percentage is shown below. Okay, so if I put in uh, $250, it will tell me that it's a 100% franked. CAS360 will work out the imputation credit based on the dividend tax rate. So we do support all different tax rates here, depending on the company, What com if the company is a particular type, it gets a, a different tax rate. If it's a different year, it gets a different tax rate and who knows what will happen with the tax rates going forward. Dividend type and also uh, so final or interim or special. And then if it's paid in cash or credit to a loan account or other. So we do support all of the different options here, but for simplicity, I'll select it's paid in cash. I'll also select the payment date Okay, and I'll make the payment date the same. Okay, and also the payment currency will be Australian dollars. Click on save and prepare and up comes my document production pack. Okay, so this is the generation of all of those documents. CAS 360 has done all the crunching. You can see a little bit of the information on the left hand side. So we've got a bit more information about the dividend here. In particular, the amount paid per share, but also the imputed credit per share as well. So that's calculated there for you, okay? And obviously the uh, proposed payment date and also the notice date that is required. And here I have my full document pack, including my dividend statements, which are all prepared and calculated per shareholder. Okay, with the imputation credit, with the total amount. Um, and if I go down to myself, can see there exactly my dividend statement with my amount, with my uh, reference number. So all of that information is prepared and we're able to send those dividend statements out. You can completely customize the dividend statements as well if you want to redesign them. Uh, we've also got here our declaration of dividend resolution, our notice of meeting members, our members minute or resolution. And now you know you can go into options and change it from a, from a minute to a resolution if I wanted to. So I've got all of those options there all the way down to our listing of dividends paid, which gives us a full report of all the dividends that were paid, including the imputed credit amounts and things like that as well. 
All right, some questions. Uh, a fair few of them have been answered uh, by Jeremy and Andy, which is really good. Um, it's good. I won't have to get to them. What I'll do now is move on to the final feature that I'm going to show you. And this is all about our email settings and being able to customize the settings that the emails are sent out. So what we're able to do in the email settings screen is we're able to work out or change, sorry, who was the email from. So we can specify in CAS 360 that uh, a reply to address, we can specify a reply to. Uh, we can auto CC and BCC people, and we can also add billing contacts. Okay, so I'll show you exactly how this works. So to access your email settings in CAS 360, all you need to do is go on settings, uh, email settings, and here you've got some options. Now, the first option here is the sender name. Now with the sender name, what you're able to do is you're able to specify a name. So you can put in here, uh, BGL Corporate Solutions, or you can put in ABC Accounting. So your accounting firm, or you can put in Corporate Services at ABC Accounting. You can type in whatever you want. Now what this means is that the email is going to appear as it's from uh, the firm. So you can put in a blanket name as the sender name. And what this means is whoever sends the email, it will come up and, sh and show as that particular sender name. Okay, you might want to put the partner's name in, it's up to you. If I toggle this option on though, what it will do is it will actually use your username as the sender name. So if I send the email, it will be from Warren Rendon. If Andy sends the email, it'll be from Andy Tam. Okay, so it will, it will specify exactly who is the sender. So you can control that, you can put in a, a firm wide solution, you can put in a user specific solution. The exact same feature applies to the reply to address. So in the reply to address, again, I can specify a particular email address that I want all replies to go to. This might be corporate services at ABC Accounting or something like that, but somewhere where you want all of your uh, responses to go to by default. Or if you toggle it on, what we're going to do here is we're going to automatically use your login email address as the reply to address. So again, if I send the email, it's going to come from wrendon at bglcorp.com.au. Or if Andy sends the email, it's going to come from uh, the reply to, sorry, is going to be atam at bglcorp.com.au. Hopefully that explains it. You've got a fair bit of control over the sender name and who appears in as the sender. You've also got the reply to address, which you can completely control. And that means if your client clicks on reply, you can get the email. We can also uh, choose to include a CC or a BCC address in every email. Now, if you're using a document management solution or a solution where you're, uh, Scott, if you've created your own solution where you want all the emails to go to a particular email address first, this is exactly the feature you can do. So if you wanna send every email to a particular email box, maybe you've got some macros set up that automatically file it, this is what you can do. You can specify a CC address or a BCC address and it will automatically go to those email addresses. And if you are using a DocuSign or soon Adobe Sign, what you're actually able to do is you're able to toggle this option on. Um, it's a little hidden option, but it will automatically CC billing contacts on your annual review email. So what this means is the billing contacts where they are not a company director, they will be CC'd in the DocuSign email. So they receive a copy of the email. They cannot sign it because they're not specified to sign, but they get a copy of the email so that they can potentially pay the bill. Okay, so hopefully, uh, I think there was a question about this, but uh, certainly if you toggle that particular option on, that will allow you to, uh, to include the billing contacts in those DocuSign emails. Do have a couple of questions here. I think Andy and Jeremy are getting through there. Um, can you advise when integration with Adobe will be set up? There were a couple of uh, other questions about Adobe. Uh, certainly you will hear from us when Adobe is set up. It's coming in the next few weeks. It's very close. So uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's very, very close. You will, we will obviously run a webinar for all of our clients introducing Adobe Sign. It will be available in both Simple Fun. 360 and CAS 360 on the same day, which is really exciting. Um, so the Adobe sign is coming very soon. It is not months, we are talking weeks. It is quite close. Um, 
hopefully that answers the question, Melanie. Um, I'll leave that question to you, Andy, because it's in response to another question that you uh, replied to. What I will do now, guys, is I will say to you, uh, thank you for coming along. If you do have any questions, please type them in the Q&A and we will answer those questions. As I mentioned, all the questions will be summarized in the community post and posted, so you will be able to see other people's questions. The next webinar is on May the 20th. It is focused on trust management. We've done a huge amount of work in trust management. We've got a huge amount of features that we're just about to release that will help you even more with trust management. Um, I think it's going to be the best webinar of the series. Certainly, if you are not using CAS 360 to manage your trusts today, this is the webinar to come along to. And if you are using CAS 360 today and you want to get more out of it, or you want to see the sneak peek of the huge new feature that we're about to release, come along to the webinar for trust management next Wednesday. I think it's going to be fantastic. If there are any questions, please type them into the Q and A uh, and Andy, Jeremy and myself will do the best we can to answer it. Um, if there's something that you wanted to ask and you wanted me to show you, please type it into the Q and A now and I'll do my best to show you. But I will say thank you all very much for coming along to the session today. Um, I hope that you learnt a fair bit about some of the lesser known features of CAS 360 and now you've got even a little bit more knowledge about how to proceed and get a little bit more out of the product that you are using. So thank you all for coming along today and I can't wait to see you all next week. Okay, a couple of other questions coming through. Um, can I make a trust distribution from CAS 360? Absolutely, you can, Vicky. Uh, you can do trust distributions in CAS 360. You can do unit trust distributions. You can do discretionary trust distributions. Both features are fantastic. And they are, this is a tease, coming up in next week's webinar. <laughs> um, how do you set up uh, the zero integration? Um, please get it. If you want to set up the zero integration, there are some steps that you need to go through get in contact with the support team. That's the best thing to do, um, either via live chat or via uh, the logger support call feature in CAS 360. They will give you the checklist that you need to follow, okay? So if you, so you wanna set up the zero integration, that's the best way to go about it. There is a checklist, do not, you cannot just turn it on yourself. There are some processes you need to go through first. Will there be a webinar on contacts or has this one been done? I inherit this with multiple contacts where one is a shareholder and the other is a director and they are the same person. Is there a way to merge these without having to generate a ton of paperwork for the client to sign? Annette, um, uh, I mean, there's a few questions here. I mean, in terms of CAS 360, uh, there's no issue with merging them, right? CAS 360 has a merge contacts feature and you can merge the contact. The issue it sounds like you're dealing with here is an ASIC issue where you have a different name for the director as you do to a shareholder, maybe a middle name, maybe an initial, maybe a different place of birth. Don't worry, I've had it in the past. Um, what, it, what the advice is, it depends really on the type of discrepancy. So in the case where the name is different between the director and the shareholder, Unfortunately, you need to contact ASIC. Generally, that's through a Form 492. If you get ASIC on a really nice day and you get a really nice person, all of them are nice at ASIC, but you get a really, really nice one, they might change it for you over the phone, maybe. It depends how big it is. If there's a spelling error or something like that, generally they'll change it. If you've got a complete middle name missing, generally you're going to have to lodge a Form 492. So hopefully that answers that question, Annette. If you do want further information, flick me an email. I'm happy to help you out. Obviously, I'm just guessing your scenario. Um, so if, if, if I'm completely wrong, let me know and send me an email and I'll do what I can to help you out. Uh, our firm is also using BGL Simple Fund 360. In terms of integration, is it something that you can help out with our IT or our IT department? Uh, Anita, um, uh, I know your firm, so get your IT to get in contact with myself and I'm happy to help you out. Um, happy to help you out with that. Um, yeah, uh, certainly we can, we can integrate it. It is something that we generally give you a checklist to go through first, make sure you've got everything right and then integrate it. Okay, so that's generally the steps. Uh, 
Scott, you asked the question about did Adobe, did we get around the sender can't sign the documents in Adobe Sign? Uh, the answer is no, because you cannot get around it. It is a dependency is the word I'll use in Adobe Sign. So if you are the sender of the document, you are the creator of the document, you cannot be the signer of the document, okay? Um, generally in our scenario, that doesn't happen too much. It probably happens more for us um, internally when we're testing it than anyone else. Certainly if you are like you are um, in a position where you, you, you are the account holder in CAS 360 and you might be needing to sign a document um, yes, that's going to be an issue. Um, I do understand that, that unfortunately it's an Adobe sign limitation that we can't get around at this stage. Okay, question here. I turned on the tracking for the document deadline alert from last week's webinar. My annual reviews was then showing in incomplete annual reviews. Does this sit there until the review has been paid? Catherine, no, it doesn't sit there until the review has been paid. It sits there until you mark the annual review as complete. Um, I'll explain this. So with the document deadline alert for your annual review, it is designed for one function only. And that is, has the solvency and the annual return been signed and sent back to the firm. If it has, mark it as complete. If it hasn't, it's considered incomplete. So the annual review deadline alert doesn't touch the debt alert, okay? We see them as two separate processes. For every annual review, there needs to be two things that are done. The company needs to sign the solvency resolution and return it to the, to the agent, and the company needs to pay the ASIC fee. So you have alerts for for um, both processes and they are independent of each other. So the reason we've got that set up is so that you can easily highlight the clients that have paid the ASIC fee and not returned the form. The you can highlight the clients that have returned the ASIC, the, the solvency form, but not paid the fee and also the clients that have not done either. So uh, hopefully that answers that question, Catherine. Uh, does ASIC require all directors to sign the solvency resolution? Uh, Janet, um, <laughs> I'm not going to answer that question. Um, certainly, I'd say look into that yourself. Uh, yeah, I'll leave it at that. I'll leave it at that. The, the Corporations Act requires that the company declares it can pay its debts and that it is solvent. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Uh, if there are any other questions, please uh, put them through to the Q&A. But thank you all for coming along uh, to the session today. Again, I hope that it was uh, a good session for everyone and that you're able to learn a fair bit about some of the other features in CAS 360. As I said, really excited for next week's session on trust management, where we've got some really nice features that we can show you. Um, but if there are not any other questions, I say thank you all for coming along today. Stay safe during these times. Look after yourself and I will see you all next week. Bye for now. Thanks a lot. Bye.